Greetings, church. Last week, we spent some time looking at chapter 1 in the Gospel of John. We have already discussed that the key word for the Gospel that we're looking for is the word believe. John set forth some very powerful descriptions of Jesus, and I hope you were able to discover many of these as you studied this past week. Pastor Ed listed 13 descriptions. and We ask you to go through the Gospel and see what descriptions you could find. So to kind of summarize last week's section and pull it together, do some review, I'm going to ask Pastor Ed to review his 13 descriptions that he came up with. And then if you found others, make note of those, send those to us. Uh, we'd like to know. Uh, we can be semi-interactive, even though we're not technically directly live streaming. Uh, you can email us your discoveries at woodlongconover at gmail.com, and we'll be able to email back and forth uh, there, and we'll be able to share some of those as we go ahead through this study. So Pastor Ed, I'm going to share this screen or try to share this screen. And uh, if you will pick up and let's talk about your 13, your 13 descriptions. Sure, absolutely. And like <clears throat> Pastor Jerry said, um, if you've come up with some different things, or if you, even if you didn't, just whatever you saw, we would absolutely love for you to send those in. Um, that's encouraging to us too, when you do that. Um, and it helps us, like I said, we're all learning from each other, you know, the Holy Spirit teaches all of us, so we're all learning from each other. But And, and we like to know people are watching us. That's, that's, that's very helpful to know that there's an audience out there. That's right. Um, so just a, just a real brief overview of some of the things that I saw. And uh, um, all of it's pretty much right there on the surface. The first one was that Jesus is the Word, uh, and he is the revelation of the Father. We talked a little bit about that last week, how uh, Jesus is the, and, and it's kind of um, uh, repeated uh, on further down and uh, where it says that he is the glory of the Father. So Jesus is the revelation of the Father. Pastor Jerry also talked about Lagos uh, last week and what that meant. Uh, the second one that I saw was in verses 1 and 2, and then really, uh, um, yeah, 1 and 2, uh, e eternal, that Jesus is eternal. And um, even though the scriptures say that he was the, he's the only begotten of the Father, it's not talking about Jesus was created by the Father. Jesus is indeed eternal. He is part of the uh, eternal Holy Trinity. And so we see that in verses 1 and 2. In verse 3, we see that Jesus is creator of all things. And uh, you can compare this with Colossians chapter 1. Again, that's one of the uh, Christological passages that says everything was created by Jesus and for Jesus. Uh, and not only did he create everything, but he holds it all together. He sustains it. So he's the creator of all things in chapter, in verse 3. In verse 4, we see that Jesus is the life. And as we start moving through the book of John here and seeing some of these miracles that Jesus is performing, you're going to see examples of Jesus uh, and how he is the creator of life. And life comes from him. Um, not only that, but we're talking about spiritual life as well. He's the creator of physical life and of spiritual life. And so Jesus is the beginning of life. Um, he is the true light. Uh, verses 4, 5, 7 through 9, we see that Jesus is the true light. Uh, we see that Jesus in, in verse 14 and verse 34 is the one and only Son of God. Again, he's, he is, uh, even though it says he's begotten, he's not created by God. He is the only Son of God. He is the grace, he is grace and truth in verses 14 through 18. And isn't that fantastic that through Christ comes grace? Mm -hmm. um, there is no other means of grace um, other than through him. And he is mm -hmm. truth. And um, that is that is something that we, we need to hold on to there, that Jesus is grace and truth. Um, he is the glory of the Father in verse 14. We talked about that last week. He is the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world, and that's a that's a beautiful display of his grace, and, um, you know, scripture talks about, uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, sheep and, and, and lambs and the sacrificial system, and Jesus is the ultimate lamb, the ultimate mm -hmm. sacrifice. Um, we see that in 
verse 29 and verses verse 41 we see that he is the messiah the christ our savior and our deliverer in verse 45 uh, he is the one whom moses and the prophets wrote about in verse 49 we see that he is the king of israel and then in verse 51 we see that he is the charge of the angels and i was talking with pastor jerry just a few minutes ago i didn't know a better way to write that out um, but in verse 51, it says that the, the angels are descending and ascending on him. And uh, so Jesus is in the care of the angels of God. Their, their mission and their purpose is to care for their Savior. And so he is the charge of the angels. So those are the 13 that I came up with. And I'm sure you probably came up with a few more, some different ones. Yeah. We'll look forward to hearing from you on those. Well, Pastor Ed, looking at those 13, what if you, if you can pick a favorite of those? I and mean, they're all... They're all kind of favorites. What would be your favorite and why? Um, well, I think if if I had to pick a favorite, and, and they're all so you know, interconnected, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think if I had to pick a favorite, I would say um, that he is the one whom, the, whom Moses and the prophets wrote about. And uh, I, I just love the idea of, uh, well, I, I'll read you one quick verse in, in Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, it says this. As I kept watching... Thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white like snow, and, their hair, and, and the hair of his head like whitest wool. His throne was flaming fire. Its wheels were blazing fire. And I know that this is talking about God the Father. Um, you know, but, but you see how not only did, did Christ create everything, um, but he's before everything. And he is indeed the Ancient of Days. One of my favorite songs is a song by Shane and Shane. Um, and it's uh, one about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there's a line in there that says, he's not an image of gold. He's the God of old. And mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. Just mm -hmm. the, the ancient, I mean, he's been here forever, you know, and, and that just kind of adds to his grandeur, I guess. And yeah, so I just, absolutely. I love that. I love that. Well, the second section uh, we ask you to look for uh, had to do with Jesus' holy initiative. What were the things that Jesus did, that you saw Jesus do in John chapter 1? So, Pastor Ed, you had 11 of those. Let's, let's talk through those if we can. Sure, absolutely. Well, here, here are the ones that, that I noticed. Uh, number one was that Jesus created man in verse 3. We talked about this one last week in verse 11, that he came to his own. And so that was something that he did. That was the mission of the Father was for Jesus to come to his own. Mm -hmm. um, Twelve. I'm sorry, in verse 12, number three, was that he gave them, and that's those who believe in him, he gave them the right to be children of God. And so um, the even the ability to be believers is something that Jesus has done. And um, wow. number four, uh, verse 14, he became flesh. And I know that that's one that we know very well. He became Absolutely. flesh. And only become flesh, he, he dwelt, he lived among us. And so uh, those are in verse 14. Verse 16, we see that he has given grace upon grace. And I love the picture here that grace comes from, from the Father. It's mm -hmm. displayed through the Son. And he's just given us grace on grace. And so just this picture of here's grace and here's more grace and here's more grace. Mm -hmm. And he's just giving grace on grace. Um, he brought grace and truth. Verse 17. Uh, you know, we can't get around the fact that, that Jesus... Is, is grace, but he's also truth. And you can't have one without the other. Absolutely. You know, in the world that we live in today, it seems like people really want grace, but they don't want truth don't want so truth. much. But you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Without truth, there is no grace. Um, and so he, he, is, uh, he brought us grace and truth um, in the person of himself. Verse 18, he has revealed the Father. And this goes back to um, him being the glory of the Father. You know, when we, he, he told his disciples, when you're looking at me, when you see me, you know me, you've known the Father. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's verse 18. Verse 29, uh, he takes away the sin of the world. That is something that Jesus alone can do. Uh, 33, he baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And if you're a believer this afternoon, um, you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. He guides you and teaches you and leads you into truth. You've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then uh, number 11, uh, verses 43 and 39, is Jesus calls us. 
Um, and I, I love this picture. You know, the scripture talks about no one comes to the Father unless he's drawn by the Spirit, unless he's, so, so Jesus is actually the one calling us to himself. We don't pursue him on our own. He pursues us. Going back to number nine there, he takes away the sins of the world. We've talked about the key word belief. Uh, one of the other key words throughout the gospel is going to be eternal life. You'll see that play over and over again. He takes away the sins of the world. He gives eternal life uh, and provides salvation. And that's, that's right. what John's talking about. And we remember from our first week, believe is in, the word believe is in there 98 times, and it is a verb. It is an active mm -hmm. verb every time. It is a continuous believing. That's, right. uh, that's a brief summary of what we talked about last week. Uh, tell us what your discoveries were. What others did you find? Email those to us, and we'll look at them and talk with talk next week some maybe about those as well. Today, we want to jump into the seven miraculous signs in the Gospel of John. John pulled these together uh, for a reason. I want to just give you an overview of those today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the first one, and uh, you're going to be looking for certain things in the others, and we'll tell you more about that as we go. But if you'll pull out the worksheet on the seven miraculous signs, uh, let's look at them together, and I didn't pull a picture of that, but uh, it's a new sheet. Here, let me borrow this. We'll hold it up here, and it looks like that. Not that you can see it, because you got the bigger screen uh, there. But uh, the seven miraculous signs in the book, uh, John, and let's talk a little bit about them. The first one of those, um, right out of the gate, uh, Jesus turns the water into wine in John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Uh, get my page turned here. Uh, be sure and on the chart, write down the reference to John chapter 2, 1 through 11. Let's look briefly at the story. This is the very first miracle of Jesus at the wedding feast in Cana. Uh, the passage begins on the third day. We've heard that in other passages as well. But pretty much the third day of Jesus' ministry, and it's the precursor to his public ministry. If you look back at the chart, uh, that I gave you in the original packet. You've got the private ministry, public ministry. So this is the end of that private ministry right before he goes totally public uh, there. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, but this is Jesus, his disciples, his mother is there, the wedding party, and their guests. And I love Mary's statement in verse 5. Just do what he tells you to do. And she knows that Jesus was the answer to the situation. And Jesus gave them a specific direction, and they served the very best wine. What did you say y'all discussed in student ministry? Uh, we, we uh, instead of calling it water into wine, we called it water into fine wine. Into fine yeah. wine, absolutely, because it was the best wine given to the wedding guests. And then look at verse 11. This is, this is where I'm looking at through all of these seven, and where I'm challenging you to look. It says, this beginning of signs Jesus did, in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory. And look at the next line, and this is where you want to underline, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus put, uh, John put this miracle into his narrative because he's trying to lay that foundation of belief. Jesus did this, and the disciples believed in him. That's key. That's what you're going to be looking for as we talk through the rest of them, we'll, we're going to look at them briefly here. Number two is the healing of the nobleman's son in John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. So you'll want to uh, be sure and write the scripture down there. The healing of the nobleman's son, John 4, 46 through 54. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and look at this scripture since it, I've taken this, script, this slide out about five times and it keeps coming back. So I think we're supposed to do it today. Uh, in verse 52 yeah. of that passage, then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. He, the, the, the father inquired of the servants, and they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. It was at the same time it lined up. And because it did that, look at look at the father's response. And he himself believed, underline that word, and his whole household. So there again, John put this miracle in here 
so that we see that this man believed and his whole household believed because of what Jesus did. Okay? Number three, the healing of the infirm man. I'm going to have to move my little screen here. Y'all, we can keep in each other's way. Uh, healing the infirm man, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. And we'll talk about that more next week, but you want that scripture, John 5, 1 through 14. And then the feeding of the 5,000 plus in John chapter 6, 1 through 14. Feeding of the 5,000 plus, John 6, 1 through 14. And what you're going to be looking for as you read through each of these scriptures is either that word believe or proof that someone or someone's believed. Feeding the 5,000, John 6, 1 through 14. And then number five is Jesus walking on the water. That's a fun one. We're going to, we're going to go out and demonstrate. No, we're not going to go out and demonstrate that one. I think, we uh, think we should. Yeah. Okay, as long as we know where the rocks are. Uh, John chapter 6, 16 through 21. Jesus walking on the water. And I'll give you a hint there on that one. Uh, it, it says they he came to them and they ask. I forgot what they asked him now. I read it earlier. But they said they invited him into the boat. Well, if they hadn't believed, I don't think they would have invited him yeah, into the right. boat. So there's just a hint. No no pressure. Just give you a clue there. Walking on the water. There is just a, a, an aside sure, for that sure. one. Um, if you look in Matthew, mm -hmm. uh, as you're reading this one too, uh, it, it, it'd be good to compare some of these with, with uh, the other Gospels in Matthew. Absolutely. Uh, Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus says, it's me. And so Peter gets out of the boat and walks and there's another evidence of belief. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he stumbled over that one, didn't he? But he did he get did. out of the boat and walk. Uh, so Jesus walking on the water. Um, I pay this turn here. I'll make sure I'm not missing something I shouldn't be. Uh, and then number six, giving sight to the blind man in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. That's a little longer passage. Than a couple of these others, but giving sight to the blind man in John chapter 9, mm -hmm. 1 through 41. So take note of that one. And then raising Lazarus from the dead, John chapter 11, 38 through 45. Uh, just an amazing story. And we, we recall there that Jesus didn't go when, when Mary and Martha called for him, he waited. Uh, and there was a purpose in his waiting, and that was so he could demonstrate this miracle, this power. So that someone would believe. Read it and see what you find there. Now your assignment for this week, as you do, as you read and study, is this look for the key word believe, or look for the result of the miracle. Who believed? What was John's goal in telling this story? Uh, the first one said the disciples believed. That was pretty easy. Underline that. Yellow highlight that. Get some yellow pencils if you're in your Bible or a yellow highlighter if you're using the manuscript that we gave you. Uh, but mark that. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. And a couple of them, uh, you have to look for it. Look to see what happened. Remember that John's purpose in the book is to bring those who read and study the gospel to an active believing in Jesus. It's not just telling the stories. The stories were told in the first three Gospels. And, and remember, 97% of John is different. It's unique from the first three. You've got the history. You've got the stories. And John said, okay, we want to go to the next step. Let's pull this together. Uh, so his purpose is, is an active belief. Uh, so he sets forth these seven foundational principles of Jesus, demonstrating, once again, that he was the son of of God the Father. Dwelling among us. Take the chart. Here it is again. I'll, you've got a bigger screen here. That didn't help much. Oh, well. You can see it's got blue on it. You can see it's got blue on it, yes. But take the chart. Work through each of those miracles this week. Fill in the notes section. We'll get together next week, and we're going to walk back through these and look at those verses and look at, look at those summaries. And... Uh, then the week after that, then we'll jump over probably into John chapter 3, unless we need to take another direction in the midst of 
that's a good deal. Uh, but that's where we are for the week. The seven miraculous signs of Jesus reviewing from last week. Uh, trying to just kind of keep all this pulled together. Any last words there? Brother? Well, just, just I just picked up on, on uh, you used the word belief and you, you before you said active belief. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because um, this is a belief that causes us to do something. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's incredibly important. I, I like that word because uh, Absolutely. that's what John was going after, a belief that would drive you to an action. Yeah, it was, it was never used as a noun. It was never just, well, I believe it has to do with putting faith in, trusting, doing something right. uh, because of that belief. So uh, look through those, uh, study this week, spend some time, and we look forward to getting together with you next week. We hope you have a great week and that God teach you as you look in the book. God bless you. Have a great day. I try.